Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in crypto and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. So just like the thumbnail suggests, we need to take a real step back and take a look at all this negative sentiment and really just to just zoom out and take a look at the big picture. And to do that, we need to take a look at a couple of our recent articles. So first up, negative Bitcoin sentiment on Twitter could lead to some big changes, so says data analytics sentiment. So we're gonna take a look at that on top of what I call the FUD wizard, uh, Scott Menard from Guggenheim, which says that uh, Bitcoin may soon fail the $30,000 mark, which is kind of odd because of the things he said in the past. We'll take a look at that. On top of that, we'll take a look at uh, my man, Tim Draper, staying strong and saying that Bitcoin could reach $250,000. And he tells you exactly when that actually could be. And we're also going to take a look at uh, some positive news as far as Bitcoin miners uh, capitulating and actually coming on over from China, uh, setting up right here in the good old uh, US of A, uh, more specifically, Texas. And finally, just to sum everything up, uh, YouTube superstar, I suppose, uh, named JJ. Uh, he's been in the game for just a little bit of time and he's already figured out and really has some great advice for all of us. And same thing I've been saying, actually. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So tonight, it is uh, Saturday, July something. I don't know the date, but uh, it's Saturday. If you're watching this, it's what it is. And uh, the market is actually rebounding, which is pretty crazy. We're at $1.31 trillion, not too shabby. We'll take a look at the coins. Let's see what's up. That's what everybody wants to know. That's what I want to know, actually. So we'll take a look. Let me blow this up so you can see what I'm talking about. So Bitcoin holding strong at 32,000. Uh, Ethereum has broken down a little bit and is below the $2,000 mark. I expect that to rebound. Tether, nobody cares. Binance coin 307. Let's see what's up. 2%, 1%, 12% for Dogecoin. Well, great. Good for the Doge holders. Polkadot, 8%, 3% for Uniswap, 2%, 5% Solana. Everything's up pretty tonight. This is pretty great. I mean, I got to be honest with you. I am surprised and I'm pleasantly happy uh, with the resiliency of this market. So um, I know there's some, there's some sentiment that is uh, pretty much negative. And uh, that's why I want to just go over a couple things and uh, what you uh, could potentially do to get yourself mentally out of it. So first of all, let's take a look at this uh, article, negative, potentially equal positive. And this is from data analytics firm Santiment. And what they say, and it kind of goes against the exact uh, opposite of what we know to be true as far as the market. And they state, as the company's experts explain, Santiment, uh, the more negative the sentiment gets, the higher is the degree of a potential price rally. And I gotta tell you, it really comes down to this. Like, every time I think I know what the market's gonna do, it kind of does the exact opposite. And uh, this is one of those things where it's like when everybody's going a certain way, a certain way, a certain way, I don't know if it is uh, the whales that are doing that or is it just the actual sentiment or the wisdom of the crowd or just, you know, uh, you make things possible just by believing in, in something. And just, it just takes one, one group, one big person or, or one big whatever you want to say, there goes my dog Chewy, uh, just to say, hey, Let's do the exact opposite thing. And all of a sudden, there's a big, huge rebound. So this isn't, in all honesty, uh, if you think about it, uh, for the when it gets to be the most bearish is when you can make the most amount of money if you have a lot of dry powder in the silence. All you got to do is just wait till it goes to a certain point and go, that's where we want to buy. You buy that. It turns around and all of a sudden, boom. Uh, and it happens at the blink of an eye because this is cryptocurrency and digital assets. Anyhow, uh, to go on to further prove the point, traders expect a price drop, the chart says, and that's a good thing for the bulls, just like what we talked about. And here was the actual tweet. To enter sentiment towards Bitcoin remains negative in the amount of volume and tone that our algorithm is picking up. Generally, when there is negativity, there's a higher degree of a price upswing to catch the crowd off guard. Does this mean that it's going to go to 100,000 tomorrow? No, that's not what it means. But it does mean, kind of like what we're seeing right now, that the market's up a little bit. And then it goes on to state that the Bitcoin Fear and Greed Index has hit 15, which stands for Extreme Fear. And this is crazy, because last time the index hit this level was March 2020, when the flagship Bitcoin faced a 50% drop in just a day on Black Thursday. And what they're talking about here is this uh, Fear and Greed Index. So. I find it very odd that people are this fearful in this time because when we had the actual pandemic uh, just ripping its way through the entire globe, uh, we saw a massive drop in one day. So I could totally see that because that's never, ever happened in a 24-hour time frame. And here we are uh, in the same type of predicament at 15. I'm like, is, do we, are we really that, that fearful? But I guess apparently some people are. Or actually, actually, I guess a lot of people are. And that's why I want to make this video. Anyhow, according to experts, 
Extreme fear in the Bitcoin market and negative sentiment uh, leads in investors to better alternatives and may be a sign of an upcoming bull run. So this is just one part where, I mean, we just see everything is just negative, negative, negative. <clears throat> and we take a look at it. Well, like what's pushing that negativity? Well, the narrative's pushing it. The price is pushing it. The volume is pushing it. And uh, some people just say this is just a little bit overpriced. But there is a couple of things that is helping off with this uh, negative sentiment. And that is the wizard of FUD as I call him, and that is Scott Menard. This guy's, God, this guy's so good. So Guggenheim, Scott Menard, and Bitcoin says 30,000 may soon fail. He sends out a little tweet. And uh, in a recent tweet, Scott Menard, chief investment officer at uh, Guggenheim, said this, a technician's rule to remember with Bitcoin is every time a support level is tested, it becomes weaker. That would mean support for 30,000 may soon fail. There's these nice charts here. And uh, Menard predicted that Bitcoin could sink to 15,000 or even 10,000 in late June. Well, that didn't happen, but it was a good try. And then later, he reiterated his bearish call, claiming that Bitcoin was in the middle of, quote unquote, a crash. So I'm just going to have everybody just do this. Uh, you've got to follow this guy. It's like gold. I mean, really, really, it's good, it's good stuff. Scott, when he has a, has a tweet, it's not his tweets that are great. It's all the responses that are just awesome. Uh, Razmataz says, 100% uh, of the time, this is true 50% of the time. This weird technical rule got me out and kept me out of so many good trades. I've done better by ignoring it. In my opinion, it's outdated. It doesn't apply in bull markets. Then you got Michael Saylor. <laughs> of course, you know he's got his thing. And then there's another guy here, uh, YOR. Not necessarily. That is always the case. As you can see in the chart, the support held for over eight months and never broke. No one knows what will happen, not even you. If someone claims they do, no, they're either a liar or a con. That is very true. Even me, I do not have a crystal ball, and I sure as heck am not Nostradamus. So <laughs> that is essentially what it is. And then the last piece I want to talk about as far as the Wizard of FUD is that he did say this. In December, Menard told Bloomberg that his firm's fundamental analysis put Bitcoin at $400,000 just weeks after that, in January, he told CNBC that there wasn't enough institutional demand to support Bitcoin's all-time high of 41,000 and that it could retrace to 20,000. And then just a little bit later, in early February, he gave CNN his highest price targets for Bitcoin, 600,000. So this guy is all over the place, but you have to understand, it's kind of like there's a, there's a jump between a trader mentality and an investor mentality. And what he's saying, I, I kind of get it where he's going, but it just kind of seems a little weird. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. I'm not going to uh, spend too much time on it. Let's move on to our next piece uh, where my man Tim Draper comes in and uh, saves the day. <laughs> kind of. Draper says Bitcoin is stronger than fiat. And he gives a, a price prediction, which I, I have to admit, price predictions to me are kind of like the cheese may. It's kind of like the different things you see in like tabloids. Like it's just good to talk about, but no one knows. But I do like to hear these things. So Draper's, just so you know, Tim Draper, who is he? Well, he's an investor. He's done pretty good. He's not like an investor, like just got lucky a couple of times. He invested in Baidu, Hotmail, Skype, Tesla, SpaceX, AngelList, SolarCity, Ring, Twitter, DocuSign, Coinbase, Robinhood, Ancestry.com, Twitch, Cruise Automation, and Focus Media. Now you have to remember this. When you're an investor, you probably have a lot of lot of duds, but uh, he's picked a lot of good ones, let's be honest. So uh, when he's talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, this guy is really behind it. And I, and I like to hear what he says. So in 2018, when Bitcoin was trading for around eight grand, Draper predicted that Bitcoin would reach 250,000 by the end of 2022 or early 2023. And this really comes down to the mentality of the investor. So really you have to think to yourself, what am I? Am I... Uh, day trader, swing trader, or am I in it for the long haul? I can't tell you what to do. This channel is just investment opinion, not investment advice. And I just tell you what I'm doing. I'm just buying and holding and every so often dollar cost averaging on uh, different cryptos. You, usually I buy a, a different crypto every day and it just varies because I have it all set up on, uh, on Voyager and uh, some other platforms just to buy things for me because I think they're like superly, superly undervalued. That's just me. So uh, to move on, this was a nice little article uh, from Benzinga, or an uh, interview, and they said, hey man, are you still standing by your predictions? And he said, yeah, I stand by my prediction, 250,000 per Bitcoin by end of 2022, early 2023. We've had many ups and downs and we'll continue to, but the global trusted, decentralized, frictionless, open, transparent Bitcoin will become increasingly popular. Uh, what should investors remember? Bitcoin represents freedom, 
Bitcoin is a minor hedge against inflation. And there's some of the things that kind of got a little boring, but you get my drift. So, and then some people will say, you know, is it really a great hedge, hedge against inf inflation? Look, um, you know, we had uh, uh, Steve Mnuchin just come out uh, a couple of days ago and he said he changed his mind about Bitcoin. Yeah, I didn't want to cover it because it's kind of long, but just to paraphrase, Steve Mnuchin, Treasury Secretary, old one, came out and said that, yeah, he thought it was just a scam. It was awful, but he puts it right on par with gold. He did say he would not be investing in the Bitcoin, but he can see why people would buy Bitcoin and gold. So I was like, well, that's a start. So uh, here we are, another example. And I think uh, that's just good to show a little bit of positivity. Anyhow, let me know you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last couple pieces. And this will go quick, just talking about Bitcoin mining. And this was a, uh, a report shows Bit Digital. I don't know who they are, honestly, but they transferred a ton, 14,500 miners from China to the US. And it's interesting that I always thought that the Chinese miners or these mining companies, they just were reactive and not proactive, but I was wrong. So on July 13th, the company Bit Digital revealed that it was migrating 14,500 Bitcoin miners to the US after the crackdown, which China crackdowns every year, so whatever. As of June 30th, Bit Digital reported that it owned approximately 32,500 miners, which produced roughly 1.92 exahash per second of hash power. Uh, talk to me in the comment section. I believe that's a lot. I could be wrong. I'm not a miner, but uh, it sounds like a boatload. Uh, and to finish up, at the end of the report, Bit Digital explains that it has been migrating miners to North America and has been since October 2020. So they saw the running of the wall and they were doing the right things. And I think that's why they hopefully they're up and running because I know the infrastructure takes a long time. Uh, they did state this. During the quarter, the company shipped 14,500 miners to the U.S. The company expects to complete the migration of its remaining China-based miners to North America early in the third quarter of 2021. And I know that there's this, there's this metric which shows that the increase in hash power has a direct correlation to the price of Bitcoin. So if we can get these Bitcoin miners up, apparently the price will go up, and that's great. To me, though, in all honesty... Um, I don't see a breakdown in the uh, infrastructure of, of Bitcoin or the actual network. I think uh, there's been no double spending. There's been no hacks. I think it's working out okay. So do we really need that many miners? I don't know. I don't Personally, I don't think so. I don't see what the whole big deal is. Why do we need so many miners? I mean, I think the network's pretty secure. Check me in the comments. Maybe I'm wrong here. Let me know. And then also, I just wanted to uh, follow up here. Here's a guy. Nice little uh, Texas flag. Good job. Good choice. Great state. And this is uh, Alejandro de la Torre. And, or de la Torre. And he is the official vice president of uh, Poulin. So who's Poulin? Well, here's the website. Uh, Poulin, or Poulin.com. Just a big mining pool. How big is Poulin? It's pretty big. And uh, if we can take a look here. Let me blow this up. So this is from news.bitcoin.com, and he got F2 pool, 21.3%. This is in 2020, so it may have changed, obviously, right? And then here's Poolin, 16.6%. And here's Poolin with their beautiful Bitcoin miners now sitting in Texas, where they should have been the whole time. So welcome. Uh, I'm glad you came. Uh, we got a lot of uh, solar and wind power. Uh, very clean energy, so you can get the other uh, narrative dismissed. And I'm glad you're here. I'd love to have you in the show sometime. We've already talked to the uh, Winstone CEO, uh, New Mind CEO, so I'd love to have you on and just talk to you. I've already sent you a uh, message, my man, Alejandro. So uh, uh, chop, chop, let's get on the show. Anyhow, uh, I just think it's good news that Bitcoin mining is uh, alive and well, transferring over to North America, EU, and even K Kazakhstan. I could care less. I just want it out of China, and I'm happy about it. So let me know if you think if this is a, a bullish move or neutral or negative, and uh, we'll finish up with, with what I think is a pretty good call to arms and a good way to just really kind of just focus on the big picture. And this is YouTube superstar JJ. I don't know who this guy is. I'm just not cool. And, uh, but he did make a lot of sense in this article. He says he made, he made and then lost millions in Bitcoin. And look, just real quick, you don't, as an investor, you don't lose anything unless you sell. So just so you know that. And, uh, you know, I remember in 2017, I bought a lot and uh, I saw the value go down, but I never sold. I just said, you know what? I'm in the business of losing money. And I dollar cost average my way out of it. And I made a lot of money over the over those over those that time frame and it wasn't easy 
But you know what? Uh, sometimes you just got to hammer down and just go, you know what? I think I know where things are going and you could be wrong, but you just try it. And here we are. So this was pretty good. Uh, JJ was asked about a rumor of him putting a lot of money into Bitcoin. And he said, yeah, he goes, I put 2 million into Bitcoin. Well, I said Bitcoin, but this was in a cryptocurrency. So probably a big basket. I made 7 million. That's pretty good. 2 million to 7 million. And now I've lost it all. So I was thinking to myself, well, how'd you, because he, he invested like uh, not too long ago. Uh, when was this? Uh, bah, 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 bah. Like uh, early summer, somewhere around there. And I was like, okay, well, how did he lose it all? Uh, he said, it's been a full journey, but I had to experience it. I had to really delve into the whole crypto space. And you know, I fully understand that now. I put money in things where I essentially leveraged myself and I kind of over leveraged. I say that for a reason. I don't like leverage traders. I, don't, I mean, if you know what you're doing, great. But a lot of you don't. So let's just admit it. It's called a spade a spade. I don't know a lot of things. I mean, I try to dip my feet in. But if I'm going to put, if I don't know what I'm doing and I go super risky and sell my house, my cars, my kidneys and leverage myself, I don't really know what's going on. It's a bad move. And I never, usually, 99% of the time doesn't, doesn't end too well. I could be wrong, but uh, that's, that's, look, I get emails weekly on people who get wrecked and they're like, what should I do now? And I got to tell my wife, I'm like, uh, should have told her before. Anyhow, I kind of overledged myself to a point where I lost money because I got liquidated. So I put a lot of money into something. I got liquidated because of the Bitcoin crash. And that's the problem. Like you make a bunch of money and you think you're a genius, which JJ could be. And then all of a sudden you get a little too greedy and then all of a sudden it gets wiped out. It's okay, happens, good learning experience, but I like what JJ says here. It is what it is, I'll move on. There's no point crying. And I realize that during the bear market is when you want to invest in things. Genius, genius. This kid figured it out in like no time flat. Congratulations, that, is, that, takes, that took me a long time. I'm just not that smart though. He was also asked whether investing in Bitcoin was like gambling. He says, no, I don't think it is. I don't think it's gambling, it's not gambling, no. Bitcoin is here to stay. It's the future. It's just that no one wants to accept it. Same with Ethereum. It's all fluctuates, but it's going up. If you stand back and look at the whole picture, it's slowly going up and eventually you're going to get 100,000 Bitcoin, a 500,000 Bitcoin and a million dollar Bitcoin. It's going to happen. And then here's the big point. Maybe it might take 5, 10, 20 years, but it's going to happen. And that's kind of like the big thing that we've been talking about here in this channel which I don't know when it's going to happen. And I'm not sticking around for Bitcoin to hit a million. I'm never going to sell all my Bitcoin, but along the way, I do have an exit strategy because uh, my goals are not your goals. And uh, I have goals of uh, owning more property and putting it into businesses. And, uh, you know, when I want to do that, I either got to sell it or I got to put it up as a leverage as far as a, um, a collateral um, loan. So again, um, I think things are going to go up. I think they're going to do pretty well. Just the timing. I cannot tell you exactly when the timing is. It could happen in a couple months. It could happen in uh, 18 to two years. I have no idea. But I just know I'm in here for the long haul. And I'm just an investor. That's all I got for you. So look, I know it's been tough lately. There's been a lot of negativity. But just when in doubt, zoom out, take a look at the big picture, see where we're going and realize it's not going to zero. And that's really all I got for you. So look, if you made it all the way in, thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, a like. Consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about here are very time sensitive. And over on Dan Clips is more of like the more advanced stuff, which we're going to go over shopping IO and uh, Avalanche. When I get the go ahead from those companies, get going. I already made the video, just waiting. Anyhow, but uh, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.